Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Musky. This is my YouTube channel. I have a cat. Her name is Zipper. She's 15. I think I've had her for uh, 13 or 14 years and I love her. I expected her to live until she was 18. She recently got a UTI, urinary tract infection, and was like trying to pee every two seconds. So the moment I noticed that, I took her to the vet. They did some stuff. She stayed overnight, came home, was okay for a day, started to tank. Then it occurred to me to take her to a second vet, uh, a vet I had taken her to before, not an emergency vet, for a second opinion. And I was really way more sad than I thought I was going to be because on the way to that second vet, <sighs> I was, I was so scared I was going to put her down. And I really want, when the day comes, I want to have a vet come to the house to do it. But I'm like, oh, what if I, what if I do it? What if I do? I just didn't have control over what I was going to do. Well, we get to the vet and she was way more clear than the other vet and lightly convinced me to do subcutaneous liquids because she was super, super, super dehydrated. She said, I think probably all these problems are coming because she's dehydrated. So now I'm giving her sub cues and force feeding her, which seems kind of disrespectful, but I digress from that. She's starting to do better, but it got me thinking it was about five days between original UTI. No, it's been about a week since UTI kidney disease. Sorry, she has kidney disease, but they don't know how far along it is. Blah, blah, blah. So it's been about a week that I've been teetering on. I don't think my cat's going to get better. And as I said, I've been way more sad about it than I thought. I would be. I had this expectation that she would live to be 18. And I was thinking on the way home from one of the vets, when I was thinking I have to put her down super quick, is this really the payment for love? Being with a human or an animal for such a long time, taking care of, having good memories with, being blessed is the payment pain. Then I thought, well, if I lose my husband, who, how, if I, if I am this sad about a cat, what would I do about my husband? Now I've never been good with breakups, by the way. I don't know how some people, and, and not every relationship I've had has been painful. The ones that were clearly done were less, but there's been ones where I, I was just devastated. And I thought, I remember thinking if I, if, if someone said to me, I'll take away this pain of the breakup, but I'm going to cut your arm off. I would have taken the deal. Absolutely cut my arm off. If you can stop this mental anguish, the mental anguish was, was the price of joy. I haven't quite worked this out. There's beautiful ways to see it. Like when someone dies, the reason you cry is because you still have love left and it has nowhere to go. It doesn't, it doesn't have the human to be directed at anymore. And, and only in its pure form can it come out as joy. But when it's like corrupted, it comes out as pain. I, I added that last part, but something like that. So then I was thinking about Zippy, Mrs. Zippy, Zippy, Zippy. I was thinking about Mrs. Zippy. That's the cat. And I thought, well, do you think you'll, I also have Zosha, my Doberman, who I love more. That's shitty to say, but I have way more bonded to her. I'm going to die. I'm going to die when she dies. Should I get another animal? Like when these cat, when this cat and dog goes, should I get another animal? just to feel like shit again in another year to 15 years. <clears throat> so then I thought, well, MGTOW. And, and if you're MGTOW, please don't feel like I'm picking on you. I'm trying to totally understand. 
And before you jump in to explain, let's talk about it. There are, there are some, and, and maybe not just MGTOW, like my mom is a perfect example. She doesn't want a relationship she hasn't for a million years. I can't understand that. There are people out there who have not been royally fucked over, but still are like, you know what? I'm not going to do it. Usually because they think, well, I could get really hurt. And the pain is definitely not worth, the cost of the pain is, does not equivocate to the potential joy I could get. Then there's a whole other group of people who received the joy and then got blindsided with a breakup and declare, I'm, it's not worth the pain. I'm not going to do that anymore. Is it at all similar to choosing to not get another animal because you know that you're going to have to put them down? The animal can cost you a lot of money. Some people don't have a lot of money, so they don't spend thousands and thousands of dollars to get their animal to be well. They put the animal down, right? And then they typically feel guilty about it because, because. Some people have the money and they just spend and spend. I'm going to tell you something. I've been married before. Many of you know that. My, I have no animosity. He's still my friend. Uh, he has a new family. It's really way better for, for both of us. The decision was fine. When we first got married, we had like X amount of thousand dollars that we got from the wedding, you know, as, as wedding gifts. Two days after we got married, we moved for him to go to law school. The idea was I would work and put him through law school. And then the idea was one day he would be successful and then he could afford to gift me three years of attempting to excel in some way that would need my full-time devotion. Something that would equal school. So we got married and we took our, I, I want to say it was like $9,000 or something. And we moved to Kansas City two days after we got married. And I, I got a job within like a week and he started school. And then his elderly geriatric cat got sick. I really think it was kidney disease. And, and the prognosis was not good. And oh, this is so weird. And, and we chose to give him the cat. My, my husband at the time really chose to, to do the sub Q fluids and prolong as long as possible. And the cat was not really getting better, but the requirement for all of that was virtually all of our wedding money. So why did I bring this up? I'm just going to keep talking about it. And, and I, and I was not happy about that. Now, am I going to say to my new husband, I'm the only one working. We need that money just in case. I mean, I brought it up, but at the end of the day, he decided, and then the cat died and then we have no money. Why did I bring that up? Oh, because I'm talking about money. And if you have the money and you love the animal, typically you're going to spend, not typically, you might choose to spend it. So in the end, you get pain and no money. And that happens with a lot of people with divorce. They get the pain and they get no money and they have to pay alimony. Was it all worth it? I wonder in hindsight, many people would say, no, it's not worth it. And if I could do it all over again, I wouldn't do it. But if you have a 20 year marriage and then you get divorced and it hurts and it costs you a lot of money and alimony. And I say to you, was it worth it? And you say, no, I wonder if I could have gone back and just picked out uh, 24 unique 
random moments within those 20 years. Every month I pick out two moments and I were to say to you, hey, if you're going to get pain in 20 years, 19 years, 15 years, is it worth it right now? I wonder how many people would say yes, because you kind of forget about pain and you kind of forget about happiness. We tend to measure all of our life's decisions and how we feel right now. It's like people with uh, hating the white people <clears throat> of the past or the Nazis. Like you are running everything through who you are and who you are free to be in the environment that you live in. It's very easy to say that you would hate racism and stand up against it or that you would never have let your Jewish neighbor been taken and you would have had the Underground Railroad. It's really easy when that is the trend right now. But how many black people right now, if white people were enslaved and brutalized, how many black people would risk their lives to help a white person? It's, it's way more tricky now. So I think it's the same thing with making a decision about if you're going, if you're going to put yourself in a situation in which the payment is pain. Have you gotten, have you got a bill in the mail for a huge amount of pain? And what was it for? Did you have to put an animal down? Did you lose your husband? Did your husband come home one day after 32 years and say that he is in love with someone else? Did your wife start having sex with your best friend after 28 years of marriage and leave you a note on the fireplace mantle? And if you have had that payment come in the mail, how did you handle paying it? Are you, did you defer? My most painful breakup was when I was 23. Yes, 23 was the worst year of my life. I lost my the one. No, no, no. What did I used to call it? Oh, I had a name for it. Like your, your love, like your original love, your first love. I did not know how to pay that. And I didn't know... I didn't know that you could go to a counselor and set up a payment plan and pay in a way that was healthy and manageable. I deferred, I deferred, I deferred. I could not pay. I knew that I needed to cry, but I would do this weird thing where I would analyze why people cry. Hmm. I wonder why people, what does it release? I, and I would, I put myself in this mindset that wouldn't, I could not, I could not cry. And I'd have like these tears, but instead I was just fucking miserable for like seven years. And it's weird because I dated and I didn't know that I wasn't over it until one day I journaled and then I, I let it go. I remember I was like 29 years old because I broke up when I was 23. And then, and then at that point I knew that I had sent the check in and I was able to have the funds to buy something else. But all the other relationships that I had before then, if they would have said, do you have any outstanding debt? I would have said, no. Yeah, I, I went bankrupt seven years ago, but you know, it only stays on your, on your credit, on your soul's credit for seven years. And in my case, that was true, but it's because I finally made a huge lump sum payment. Do you know how to do that? Do you know how to make payments? Or are you the kind of person that has not only deferred, but like built up so much fucking interest that now the payment, you could have just paid it. Now it's what I like to call insurmount to passable. Now you can't buy 
anything else, even if you wanted to, you don't even think it's possible. There's no way that you have the credit. But the thing is, you do. How did you, how do you handle? The older I get, the easier it is for me to cry. Are you like that? When I was 12, my grandpa, who I love very much, died. And within two days, my cat, my love of my life cat, Tommy, died. And I, I cried really hard, privately. But whenever family or friends or anyone was around, I would hold it in. Do you know how hard it is to do? I imagine that it's, it's hard for a 13-year-old like, a to not ejaculate within two seconds of having sex for the first time. The amount of mental strain to keep your mind focused. Like I always think about a baseball or a baseball bat and I make myself explain what a baseball and a baseball bat is to try to remove myself from paying in tears in front of somebody. That's really hard to do. Do you struggle with, with releasing pain? When I got divorced, <laughs> As I said, I cry easier when I'm the older I get. I, I learned how to cry in front of people and I started to not care about, because I care very much about making someone uncomfortable. If I cry, I'm like, oh God, then they're gonna feel uncomfortable and they don't know if they should console me or walk away. Like I really care about what the other person is thinking. So I didn't want to cry in front of people. But then when I was divorced, I was like, fuck it. And I would see people at the grocery store and they'd be like, hey, Jennifer, how are you? And I would start to cry. And I, I just got to a point where I just did not care anymore. It reminds me of I got food poisoning in Thailand. I had, and you're gonna make fun of me. I was there for months. So I got sick of Thai food and I ordered Italian food and I got food poisoning. The kind where you have to throw up and you have diarrhea, like you're gonna shit your brains out. And I remember I was on the beach, the restaurant was on the beach, and then there was like community bathrooms in the back and all the stalls were taken. And it was like a mad dash of 30, sprinting 30 feet to the bathrooms or the ocean was like 12, 15 feet away. And there's people walking, you know, and there's restaurants open. It's not like nice, like glitzy and glamorous, but it was cute and quaint. And I remember thinking, I'm gonna shit in the ocean. I, I'm gonna have to run and have diarrhea on the shore in front of people. And I don't care. Where a lot of people slip into, you're in the frontal cortex, but then you start to become reptilian in your thinking and reactive. I was the opposite. I like was thinking I'm gonna shit in front of a bunch of people and I don't care. And I had glimpses of the front brain going, are you kidding me? You're not gonna shit in front of a bunch of people. But I didn't care. And that's how I felt when I finally learned that it was okay to cry in front of people or maybe not learned that it was okay, but accepted it and did it. But I got through that divorce, not seven years later, not seven years. I had a payment plan. It was when I had money and someone asked for the payment, I would give it, whether I was at the grocery store or on the phone or at work. Uh, I just, I, I let it go. I also did something else, which I've never told anyone except for my husband, because it's so, it's really, really corny, but I feel compelled to talk to you. Maybe I can help somebody. I got divorced in the fall. We, we decided. And I moved and I would take Shanti. She's dead. That one I handled all right. She was 16 when she died. She's a dog. And I took her, my plan was, this was my payment plan schedule. I would take her for a walk in the morning, a walk before work. I worked at four and then a walk after work. I'd get home between nine and 11. And like I said, it was fall. Here's where it's really stupid. The, because it was fall, the leaves, what were they doing? They were falling. And I said to myself, on these walks, you can cry and you can be emotional. And all of your pain 
and all of what needs to come out and down is on the leaves. So, so pretend that that is your pain. But by the end of this season, before winter comes, I want you to have all the leaves on the ground. I want your pain to be handled. So I'm going to give you three walks a day to accomplish that. And, and lo and behold, it really worked. I had my scheduled payment plan. I allowed myself to cry also whenever. And I remember walking in the winter feeling pretty freaking good. But every so often, there's still some Klingon trees in the, in the winter. And, and there was still some Klingon sadness. I would still find myself to be emotional every now and then. But for the most part, I paid it up. That is all I have to say. So if there's any MGTOW, I know you're so mad at me. You want to say your mean things. Or maybe not. Maybe that's, that is just totally untrue. You have really figured this out. You're not bitter. You're good. And you agree or disagree with what I'm saying. So that's, that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. What do you think? <laughs> All right. Have a good day. I hope that if you are in pain... Man, that you don't defer it. It doesn't work. It didn't work for me. That's it. Have a good day.